Shalom. This is Yaquab with the GMS Dallas Camp. Uh, first off, I want to give all praise to Yahweh by Shimei Awashai, the ones, the uh, apostles and elders of Great Millstone who teach and rule well. And uh, salutations to the Akiyam scattered throughout the four corners of the earth, you know, keeping this uh, truth, you know, in sincerity. You know, just wanted to go into, a, you know, a quick topic, you know, pretty much going into, uh, um, you know, how the Most High, you know, pretty much provides and gives everything that you need, you know, you know, uh, concerning in everything you do, you know, you know, they, you know, you got a car, for example. I always use that example, but you know, you get a car, you know, you you were able to get it through your job, you know, making making money, making a certain amount of money to where you can afford a car and, and pay it month month to month. You know, at the end of the day, man, you got to know that the hey, that was the will of the Most High. You know, that you gotta you gotta understand that you being able to pay that car and and getting that job. And being able to make that car note is the will of the most high, man. He allowed for you to be able to get that car. You know, because cause through, through the most high is, is how we receive blessings. You know, and curses and things like that. You know, so that's what, that's what, a, that's what a lot of people don't understand. Is that the most high gives and he takes away. Which is what which is what I'm going to read in uh, Job chapter two, right? And I'm gonna start from the top, just so we can get a little, uh, a good uh, perspective on on where we at concerning this chapter, right? So I'm gonna go. I'm gonna start at verse one. Excuse me. Again, again, there was a day when the sons of the Most High Yahweh came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord, which shows you right there. I'm just going to bring, you know, uh, make a side note on this: that the Satan, that that Satan answers uh, uh, to the Most High, man. So there was no rebellion, no going against the Most High, man, because Satan is, it, 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 you know, answers to him. You know, he 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 gets orders. And 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 what on what to do and things like that, you know what I'm saying? Showing you that the hey, the that Satan is a uh, you know Satan you know Satan uh, answers to the Most High. Okay. Verse two. And the Lord said unto Satan, From whence camest thou? And Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth. And from walking up and down in it. Right? And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect and, and an upright man, one that feareth the Most High, and escheweth evil? And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him to destroy him without cause, you know? So there, you know, Satan had already uh, pretty much messed with Job, because if you read in the uh, previous chapter, you know, uh, let's see, if he's, uh, it's like, give me one second. I just want to get a good perspective on what Satan had already done to Job. Okay, so look, I'm going to start right here, right, verse 9. Then Satan, you know, so this, he said the same thing like we read in the second chapter. And the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job that there is none like him in the earth, a perfect man, a perfect and an upright man, one that feareth the Most High and escheweth evil? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, Doth Job fear the Most High for not? So, does, you know, he told him, you know, does, does, does Job fear you for, for no reason? Verse 10, has not thou made an hedge about him? So, you know, pretty much him telling him, like, look, you you got this protection around him, you know? Haven't you done that? Let me continue on this. And about his house and about all that he hath on every side, thou hast blessed the work of his hands. 
and his substance is increased in the land. But put forth thine hand now and touch all the all that he hath, and he will curse thee by that fast. So, so if, you, if you take, you know, he pretty much saying, if you take that hedge around him, and you touch him, you know, you know, in whatever case, you know, put some kind of uh, plague on him. You know, Satan saying that, you know, he's going to pretty much curse and turn his back on him. And this is what the Most High said, right? And the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, all that he hath is in thy power. Only upon himself put not forth thine hands. So Satan went forth from the presence of the Lord. So he told him, you know, he pretty much, the Most High told Satan, like, okay, look, go ahead and do whatever you got to do. You know, just, you know, pretty much don't kill him, right? Verse 13, And there was a day when his sons and his daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And there came a messenger unto Job and said, The oxen, the oxen were plowing and the asses feeding beside them. And the Sabines fell upon them and took them away. Yea, they had slain the servants with the edge of the sword, and, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was just speaking, there came also another and said, The fire of the Most High has fallen from heaven, and had burnt up the sheep and the servants, and had consumed them, and I only am escaped alone to tell thee. While he was just speaking, there came also another, you know, so there was then, you know, uh, situation after situation going around. You know, like we read right here, the Sabines fell upon them, you know, so pretty much killed, uh, let's see, You know, so pretty much killed his uh, oxen. You know what I'm saying? His oxen, you know. It, it, you know, the Sabines came. You know, came through there and uh, destroyed it. You know? And it says, and then, and, you know, while that servant was still, you know, still talking, there came another one. You know, and it said that the fire of God is falling from heaven and had burned up the sheep and the servants consumed them. And he was the only one to escape. And then while he was talking, you know, you know, there came another one and said the Chaldeans made out three bands and fell upon the camel and have carried them away and slayed the servants with the edge of the sword, you know. And while he was, you know, again, while he was still talking, there came out another one. You know, thy sons and thy daughters were eating and drinking wine in their eldest brother's house. And behold, there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead and I only escaped alone to tell you, you know, so he killed you know, like we read just read, with like we just uh, read right there, his sons and his daughters, man you know so all these things came about and that, you know all of a sudden on Job, man right verse 19, and behold there came a great wind from the wood, okay I'm going to read that again and behold there came a great wind from the wilderness and smote the four corners of the house and it fell upon the young men and they are dead and I only escaped alone to tell thee right verse 20 then Job arose and rent his mantle and shaved his head and fell upon the, the ground and worshipped you know what I'm saying so the age Job was you know even all the even though all these atrocities came upon Job man he's still he's still praising the most high he still worshiped the most high right Verse 21, and said, Naked came I out of the out of my mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. The Lord gave, and the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And all this Job said not, nor charged the Most High foolishly, man. So hey, like Job said, man, naked came out of the womb, mother's womb, and naked shall I return thither. You know, so hey. Uh, everything we, we gain throughout this world, man, you know, we ain't gonna be able to take it in the next world. You know, hey, the Most High gave you everything that you got right now, and in, 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 in a moment, in a second, without you even being able to notice, man, the Most High will take it away. Like he says right there in that same verse, the Lord gave and the Lord had taken away. And it blessed be the name of the Lord, Yahweh Shem Shai. You know, and in verse 22, all this Job said not, nor charged the most high foolish, you know. So, so now that we got a good uh, perspective on these, you know what I'm saying, we're going to continue on this, right? 
So we read that in, in, in Job chapter 2 verse 3. Well, actually, let me uh, read that in uh, in 1 Samuel's, you know, because cause, uh, Hannah, she also understood that, right? Okay, let me see uh, 1 Samuel, I believe it's chapter 2, right? Let me start at verse 1. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart rejoices in the Lord. My horn is exalted in the Lord. My mouth is enlarged over mine enemies, because I rejoice in thy salvation. There is none holy as the Lord, for, is the, for there is none beside thee, neither is there any rock like our power. Talk no more so, prou uh, so exceeding proudly. Let no arrogancy come out of your mouth, for the Lord is a power of knowledge, and, my, and, by, his, and by him actions are weighed. The bows, so like the bows of the mighty man are broken. And they that stumble are girded with strength. They that were full have hired, uh, hired out themselves for bread, and they that were hungry ceased, so that the barren hath borne seven, and she hath many children is wax feeble, right? And this is the point right here. Verse 6 The Lord killeth and maketh alive, he bringeth down to the grave and bringeth up, right? The Lord maketh poor and maketh rich. He bringeth low and lifteth up. He raises up the poor out of the dust and lifteth up the beggar from the dunghill to set them among princes and to make them inherit the throne of the glory of glory. For the pillars of the earth are the Lord's and he has set the world upon him. You know what I'm saying? So the hey the most high, you know, he's the one that decides what happens and what goes on, who lives and who dies, who's rich and who's poor and who the Most High is the one that's in charge, man. He, he's the one in control. So, you know, I'm going to read verse 7 again. The Lord make it poor and make us rich. That bringeth low and lift it up. Uh, well, I should really should have read verse 6 again. The Lord killeth and make it alive and bring it down to the grave and bring it up, man. So the Most High wants you alive. If he wants you dead, it's going to happen, man. No matter what, you know, no matter what you decide. That's why it says in Romans chapter 9. It's not of him that uh, it's not a, uh, of his will that runneth, but of who the Most High showeth mercy. You know, roughly paraphrasing. So I'm gonna go back to Job chapter two, right? Let's see, and then you know I'm gonna start uh, back in. So I'm going to start back at verse 3, right? And the Lord said unto Satan, Hast thou considered my servant Job, that there is none like him in the earth? A perfect and an upright man, one that feareth the Most High, and escheweth evil. And still he holdeth fast his integrity, although thou movest me against him, to destroy him without cause. So, hey, like we read in Job chapter 1, you know, the mo hey, uh, Satan had killed his family, you know, his sons and his daughters, his oxen. You know what I'm saying? But through all that, in that single, in that one moment, hey, Job, Job still worshiping the Most High, right? And Satan answered the Lord and said, "Skin for skin, yea, all all that a man hath will he give for his life. But put forth thine hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse thee to thy face." Okay, so like So in that first chapter, it didn't, you know, the Most High had told uh, Satan not to touch him. You know, not to touch Job, so that's what that's talking about. But hey, but Satan was saying like, look, let me let me touch Job now. Let me let me put something on him, and I bet that he's gonna curse you to his to your face. You know, and in verse six, and the Lord said unto Satan, Behold, he is in thine hand, but but save his life. So now he's telling him, like, okay, go ahead and touch him. Go ahead, do whatever you gotta do to him, but don't, just don't kill him. So this is when he said, you know, that, verse 7. So went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord, and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. And he took him at Potter to scrape himself with all. And he sat down among the ashes, and said, to, and, and said his wife unto him, Does thou still retain thine integrity? curse the most high and die so hey after, you know hey, hey satan ended up touching after all these things that happened to job and satan and satan touching job to where he was had all these uh, infirmities you know boils and uh from from the top of his head all the way to his foot 
you know, his wife came up to him and he was like, man, curse the Most High and die, man. You know, but look at what Bo, look at what Job said. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of the Most High? And shall we not receive evil? And all this not and all this did not Job sin with his lips. You know what I'm saying? So throughout all these things, man, Job still didn't uh, uh turn his back on the Most High, man. That's why when these things happen, for example, you know, you go through you're going through rough, rough times, you know what I'm saying? You get in a car crash, uh you sprain your ankle or you know, little shit like that, or or you get a ticket, you know, the, hey, that's the most high uh uh um you know, dealing with you, man. He's showing you know, he's 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 trying to prove you, trying to show you trying to you know trying to show that you know trying to uh test you to show if you really uh uh willing you know to persevere through these things you know what i'm saying that's why as a matter of fact you can get it real quick in uh i believe it's in uh what's in Psalm chapter three See, uh, give me one second. Or it might be, uh, Okay, come on. I'm a, yeah, yeah. It's chapter 3. I'm going to start at verse. I'm going to start at verse 5. And having been a little chastised, they shall be greatly rewarded. For the Most High proved them and found them worthy for himself. So that the key word is chastised, man. Which means to be a... Uh, well, actually, let's look up the direct definition on it. So like chest chastisement, same word. It's the act of scolding or punishing someone if you talk back to the your stern teacher and you won't be surprised by attachment. Okay, so hey, that's that's the nation of Israel, man. Talking back to the most high, put, put, uh, turning their back on them. You know, they stiff necked people, man. They turned away they turned their backs on the lost edge commandments of the most high. That's the way of the Most High uh, 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 punishing us, man. Putting us in captivity. Making us go through uh, all sorts of things, man. You know, uh, hey, you might get hurt. You might get some kind of sickness or, or some kind of bullshit in your life happens. Hey, that's the Most High's chast my ch uh, uh, chastisement, man. But like it says in the scriptures, man, you got you know, you to fight through it. You know, because that's the Most High dealing with you. Let's see, uh, there's one... In the New Testament, I forget where it's at, but Lord willing, I can find it real quick and I'll land it up on that. Give me one second. I know it's in Hebrews. Okay, there we go. Hebrews chapter 12. I'm going to start off at verse... Okay, I'm going to start off at verse 5, right? Hebrews chapter 12, verse 5. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children. My son, despise not the chastening of the, of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. You know, that's the Most High rebuking you, man. You did some shit. So now the Most High, you know, throw something on you. For example, uh, your car might break down. You might get stopped by the cops, go put in jail, or whatever the case might be. Hey, that's the most high chastising you. So I'm gonna look up that word. Let's see, chastising. I mean, so the whole education of children, which relates to the cultivating of mind and morals, and employs for this purpose now commands and admonitions now reproof and punishment. And it also includes the training and care of the body. You know what I'm saying? Whatever in adults also cultivates the soul, correcting mistakes and curbing passions instruction which aims at increasing virtue 
chastisement, chastening of the evils with which the Most High visits men for their amendment. You know? Let's see. Uh, I want to also work, look up that word rebuked. Just so we can get a good understanding to convict, refuse, confute, generally with a suggestion of shame of the person convicted by conviction to bring to the light, to expose, to find fault with, correct. You know what I'm saying? So let us read that again. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as unto children, my son, despise, despise not the chastening of the Lord, nor faint with, uh, when thou art rebuked of them. So it says, so I'm reading that right there. You know, despise not the correction or the correcting of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him, man. So, hey, when the Most High doing these things, man, you know, despise not the Lord, man. He's doing it for your own good. That's why it says in Baruch chapter 4, you know, uh, that he didn't put us in captivity uh, uh, to destroy us, but because we moved the Most High to wrath, man. So we in this condition because the Most High is ch chasing us, man. He's... He, you know, he's punishing us for going off. And at the same time, for the elect, man, he's building them up, making them stronger. You know, verse 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth, man. So, hey, if you're going through these things, man, that's why the scriptures say take it cheerfully. And I believe that's in Sirach, if I'm, if I'm mistaken. You're supposed to take it cheerfully, man. Because, if, hey, if you're going through these things and you're in the truth, man, that's how you know the Most High dealing with you. You know, you got to do, do, deal with certain bull, uh, bullshit situations, man. Hey, I know it's hard. I know it's, it's hard to really just go persevere through it. But at the end of the day, if you're willing to go through it and fight, fight through it, man, hey, you know, that's that's showing you that that that, that you you about this thing, man, that you strong, man. Right? Like it says right here, verse 7, If you endure chastening, Yahweh dealeth with you as with sons. For what son is he whom he father chasteneth not, man? So what? It's, hey, you you know, you got a father, you got a son. You know, and then the son does something wrong, you know. What what father's not going to correct him, man? What, son, what father's not going to uh, uh, punish him and, and show him the right way? You know, that's not a good father if he don't do nothing. Right? Look like it says right here, verse 8. But if he be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then then are ye bastards and not son, man. So if you're not going through that, man, then the Most High is not dealing with you. You know, verse 9, like we just brought out the example. Furthermore, we have had fathers of our flesh which corrected us. And we gave them reverence. Shall we not much rather be in subjection out to the Father of Spirits and live? Mm. You know what I mean? Oh, it's like it. mm. uh, So, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Hey, but if we got our earthly, fa our fleshly fathers, or it's so like your earthly fathers here, and then throughout our, uh, our growing up, you know, we showed them reverence. For, for everything that they've done for us, for whether punishing us and showing us the correct path, you know. So, how much more should we show it to the Most High? Yeah, how about Shimia you know what I'm saying? You know, like it says in verse 10, for they verily for a few days chastened us after their own pleasure, but he for our profit that we might be partakers of holiness, man. So, the Most High chastising us, uh, 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 to be partakers of his holiness, man. You know, for the you know he he's setting up he's setting us up, and, and uh, making us go through all this these you know these uh, all this refinement for a reason, and and you know not for not. You know, hey, when you you know when you out there, you, when, if you in this truth and you go you out there in this world in, in this wicked ass world and you going through some shit, man, it's because the Most High dealing with you like he deal with sons, man. And it's to make you stronger, man, and, and, and it's to refine you, you know? So don't look at it like it's some shit like, wow, why is he doing this or why, you know? Because that's how these two-thirds look at it. Like, why would the Most High take away my mom? Why would he give her cancer or why am I going? Th you know what I'm saying? Like, the, the scriptures has the answer, man, and, and, and we out here giving them. When you go, uh, there's, there's there's a reason for every situation. There's a reason for why things happen, man. 
and if some bullshit happens in your life, man, it's because the Most High dealing with you. And that's and that's and that's going out towards the elect, the elect men of the Lord out there, out going out in the highways and byways doing this work. You know what I'm saying? The Most High dealing with you if he if he putting you through some shit. You know. But yeah, you know that you know that's you know Lord willing, this was edifying. With that, I'm gonna say shalom.